Um, but I love the fall. Uh, it's that time of year again. Colorful leaves. The mosquitoes are gone. Actually, I'll be honest, the mosquitoes uh, really, maybe they were by you, but they really were not that horrible uh, this year. Um, maybe it's just because I didn't go out that much at night. I don't know. But, um, but the mosquitoes are gone. There's a coolness in the air. There's a crisp in the air. I love the crisp feel. Now, how many of you fall is your favorite season? It is. I love it. I love it. I love it. The older I get, I don't like the winter as much. And I'm not a big fan of spring because that means the heat of summer is coming. But I love that crisp fall. I feel like I can breathe better. The air just seems better. I love to wear a good sweatshirt uh, during that time as well. Uh, can't, how many of you love, uh, love to build a campfire uh, during the fall? A good campfire, get some pudgy pies going. How many of you like Little Farmer? Come on. All right. My wife went there, not this Saturday, but last Saturday. She said it was incredibly packed. Um, and of course, the weather's been great. Um, and then the big thing, too, is that literally it is also the season of everything. And I mean everything pumpkin spice. It's getting crazy. Almond, all the things that have it. Matter of fact, look at what I saw the other day at Walmart. They literally now have pumpkin spice motor oil that you can put right into your car. I mean, come on. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, come on. I mean, I, I, mean, I like it, but I didn't know my car liked it as well. Mm. Maybe that explained why it died before it leave Walmart too. I'm not sure. But anyway, I mean, pumpkin spice craziness going on everywhere. That is crazy. But just don't drink that. that. You don't want to do that. It's for your car, okay? Um, but the best thing, and the next, the next slide says this, the best thing about fall is, can we give it up? Next slide. Can we give it up for our C group ministry? Woo! In a little bit, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about what we're going to be dealing with here at the beginning of the year. And I think it might be, it might be, now again, we haven't gone through it yet, but this C group, I, again, we've been doing this for 12 years. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I, yeah, that is awesome. Amen to that. I can't believe it. I think we started, um, uh, I think Ken and Carrie were, were my first, uh, were at the beginning. But I remember the Tim and Vicki uh, were there at the beginning. Is, is Tim and Vicki here today? Okay. Um, they probably knew I was going to embarrass them, so that's why. But anyway... Um, the thing is, is that we had some great leaders at the, at the 12 years ago. I can't believe that. I can't believe it's been that long already that we've done that. How many of you, and I, I, I would love to know this, how many of you have been part of C groups from day one? Raise your hand. All right, look all around. That's great. That's great. Um, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. You stuck it out through the thick and thin, even through COVID and all that stuff. Um, and, but the thing is, the best thing of the fall is C groups. And that is our small group ministry. Uh, I believe God has, again, is going to use our groups for wonderful things. I believe that this will lift our church to another incredible level spiritually as we come together to love people, love life, and love God. We average about half of our church, half of our church attends a small group. And I think that's incredible. Again, it is the, and I, I, I used to always say, I always used to say it was the strongest ministry besides Sunday morning, but our strongest ministry will always be prayer. But the most well attended group is our C groups by far. I mean, more than Sunday school, more than uh, you know, our Sunday night lineup, uh, more than the other ministries we do here, by far the, your, your involvement in C groups um, is, is about the same as what you almost see here on a Sunday morning. It is, it is great. It is awesome. And our deacons and our whole small group leadership have been praying for you. They've been praying for this time. They've been praying for your neighbors, for your friends, and for your family who need to be part of a small group where God can walk into their lives and to change their lives. To be people truly care, where people truly care and where you can truly be Jesus with skin on. 
And as we start this season, we're going to launch this Wednesday, believe it or not, and I hope they're packed, and that's great. As we start this season, let's take a look at the importance of being in a C group. If you can start that video there, son, that would be great. Join a small group. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know what happened there. Either it crashed or my son is sick and tired of C groups. I don't know. I'm joking. Um, but anyway, um, that is what C groups are all about. You can go back on the, the PowerPoint when you're ready. Um, why do we do C groups here? Um, we do C groups for two big reasons for discipleship and for community. For discipleship and community. Amen. Amen. Um, is there a problem with the computer, son? Oh, there we go. Anyway, there we go. I just wanted to make sure I just saw a blank screen and I was hoping that the computer didn't crash. But uh, small groups are about couples. They're about families. They're about singles. Wherever you are in life, it's about you. Who like to get together for a refreshing time to get away and to relax. It is a place to feel loved, cared for, and accepted. And to find answers to life's questions in a non-threatening and safe environment. Matter of fact, the C group name itself, it can, a matter of fact, small groups are, I mean, it, it depends what church you go to. Some, they're called Life Church, they're called Connect Church. I wanted to call it C groups because I didn't want to be called what everyone else was called. And I like C groups because you could, it could be named for like cell groups, which is another name. But what I like is to take it from the name of our church. If we are celebration assembly and we're celebrating the love of the Lord, it is celebration groups. And that's what I love to be the, you know, let's use the name of our church. And so C groups are celebration groups to come together. Our small groups are to be the place to prepare and equip men and women to battle what they face daily at work and at home and at school. It's great that you come on Sundays, but you really need something in, on a Wednesday because some of you already feel defeated by Monday. And you need that family. It is truly family. Matter of fact, something you can't get here at a big group is really that family atmosphere. But at a small group, you catch up on old times, you catch up with friends. It truly is like a family. To give you encouragement and hope that are not in this battle alone. We are all in this journey together. And we are not to live this life on an island. We are meant to be together. It is the heartbeat of the Lord himself. It is actually how the church even started to meet. And you can, church, you can put that scripture out of Acts 2. And it says this. And day by day, attending the temple together, which could be the church of today. They're attending the church together. And what else did they do? They broke bread in their homes. So the importance of the First Testament church, the church started by temple, which is what we would do today, church. But also they broke breads in their homes. That example is what we follow today. Sunday morning church, breaking bread together at your C groups. They receive, they receive their food with glad and, and generous hearts. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And what happens when you come to a big church atmosphere on Sunday mornings and you go to a C groups and break bread? They added to their numbers day by day those who are being saved. That shares that you need the big, you need the small. That is the magic combo right there. You have church, you have C groups, you come together and you add daily to what the Lord wants to do in your life. Can I get an amen? And Jesus actually, actually, here's the thing. We would not do C groups unless it was biblical. Not only does that show it, but Jesus had his own C group. And it was his 12 disciples. Matter of fact, God didn't say, I want to have a group of 100,000 always with me. No, he said, I want a small group. A small group. And if God himself was a C group leader, I am really thinking that it is important for all of us to attend one. Actually, a successful church itself, and I said this before, 
and that is the next slide, needs to be balanced with that large group atmosphere, the church or the temple, and the small group intimacy breaking bread together. It's like a wings of an airplane. You break one wing, you're going to die. You're just not going to make it. You need both. You just can't come to this to Sunday morning. You need to come to both to really grasp what the Lord is going to do and how you can grow in discipleship. What, are, what, what happens in a C group? That's your next slide there. There's activities. There's prayer. There's outreach. There will be desserts and food there. They're building relationships there. Sense of fam Some of you actually didn't come to this church because of the Sunday morning, but you came through C group first and then you came. I, that is really what I want. I would love for them to first come to an intimate, safe group, and then they come to the church. Some of you came that way. A sense of family, closeness, safe place to share, spiritual growth, laughter. I like that one. Laughter. I love to hear that. Relaxed place. And the list goes on and on in a small group that you cannot get in a Sunday service alone. The biggest thing you see in a Sunday service is usually the hair of the person in front of you. You don't get to know that person. And most important, it's an informal way in the comfort of someone's home to grow close to Jesus in discipleship. To be united with others that are going through the same stuff and junk that you're going through. All traveling in the same direction all in the same journey together. You might all have separate lives, but we're all going together in the same journey called C Group. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says it this way. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them, that's what we do in a C Group, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded them, and surely God will be with us always to the very end of age. I encourage you with that today, this morning. It is a way to discuss and to open up more than you would on a Sunday morning service. I pray that many of you and your families and your friends and neighbors would be loved and blessed during these times. Matter of fact, I encourage all groups to have one empty chair. I don't care how full the, the C group is, I always encourage every group to at least have an empty chair there. Why? Because to let us know, there's always more room for one more person. Always room, no matter how packed it is, there's always room for one person. Your friend, your family, your coworker, your boss that you really don't like, but you know that they need the Lord. Whatever it is, they, we leave that room, we leave that empty chair there and we pray over that chair. Small groups are creating a place to bring your friends and neighbors, your coworkers and your bosses. Again, maybe they don't, maybe, they'll, maybe they're like, you know what, I will never darken the doors of a church, you know, because if I do, then lightning will strike. I know I hear that quite often. But I'll go to a small group where there's intimacy and love, then when I feel safe, then I'll come and meet everyone else in the, in the church. Now, Dr. Bill Ezekian, he's a professor emeritus at Wheaton College. And I think he has said what small groups are better than I could even preach it. And he said this, it is in a small group that people can get close enough to know each other, to care and to share, to challenge and support to confide and to confess, to forgive and to be forgiven, to laugh and to cry together, to be accountable to each other, to watch over each other and to grow together. Personal growth will not happen in isolation. That is so true. Personal growth will never happen by yourself, but it is a result of interaction in relationships. Small groups are God's gift to foster change in character and in your spiritual 
growth. When I read that, when I remember reading that years ago, it so, in that one paragraph, so stated the importance of being part of a group that is smaller, where you can intimately pray for each other, talk with each other, be vulnerable to each other, but really, really just grow as a family together. I can see how our vision would happen through our small groups. I can see a vision of reaching our 30,000 in our community that need Christ. Seeing this place full of people loving each other and loving God. Small groups can make a difference in our area. How? Through outreaches, through community events and services. Matter of fact, each group is also uh, responsible to do an, uh, a community outreach, a community service project uh, in their C groups as well. Seeing the needs and meeting them through hospital visits, volunteering. I know one group last year, or maybe this was, and I know a couple of them done this, have gone to nursing homes and spent time with people at the nursing home. I thought that was great. Uh, we have done many things throughout our community. They are scattered throughout the city to help you reap to the harvest, to be where they're at. I highly recommend that all of you give it a try and participate and become a regular in your small group. Give it a try, even just once. What do you have to lose but to gain an incredible, awesome family? Matter of fact, your family in Christ is stronger than your own biological family. There is something that holds us together, and that's Jesus. And the quote that I love to use every year is this, the next, the next slide. Life is truly better in circles than in rows. Life is truly better spent in circles than in rows. The role that you're in right now, I don't know how much you talk to those people. Matter of fact, I don't know how much you even know of everyone in your role. Do you know their families? Do you know their birth dates? Do you know what they like and don't like? It's harder when you're in a role to really know each other. But when you're in a circle, you can't help but see each other, love on each other, and grow with each other. Mark 2, 1 to 5 says this. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that, and he had, and heard that he had come. They gathered in such large, number, such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And since those men could not get in through the door to where Jesus was because of the crowd, they made an opening on the roof, the G uh, roof above Jesus, by digging through it and then lowered the man on the mat through the roof that he was lying on. And what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't look at the ill of the person and said, because of your illness, you're healed. No. He didn't even look at that person. He didn't even look at the, matter of fact, he didn't even look at the faith of the person. What he said is he saw the faith of his friends. He said, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. What does that have to do about C groups? Is that you might come and you're tired. You might come and you're depressed. You're disappointed. You're frustrated. You found out you had cancer. Your, your spouse left you. You really don't have any faith to even function. But you know that I'm going to go to a C group because that's where people care. And here's the thing, is that even by you coming, you're going to be surrounded by people that will love you, that will care for you, and I believe because of their faith, you will be touched and you will be encouraged and you will be healed in the name of Jesus. Just think of that group of people as a small group as well. We see here in Mark 2 that Jesus forgave the man's sin because of their faith. This is why circles matter. Because God moves through circles. And I, um, every year I love to, uh, I love to ask uh, one of our faithful 
uh, our faithful people in one of our C groups to give a small little testimony. And this year, I asked Esmeralda uh, Torres to give a quick testimony. Let's just give it up for Esmeralda. Amen. Thank you. That was perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect so much. Yes, the one thing, uh, and I just was thinking of that as you were saying that, Esmeralda. Yeah, she was one that... Um, uh, that yeah, she was not ready for the big the big church yet, uh, the big setting. But she was invited to come to a C group, um, and she was even just even at the beginning there. I knew she was kind of nervous and what what is this and what is all that. But she really grew into that, f found a safe family to be a part of, and um, and then felt that encouragement to come. Uh, to the big church setting and so um, and yeah matter of fact when we switch from a Sunday to a Wednesday and, and the reason why uh, we did that was due to a, a lot of prayer and um, ministry things that were going on here uh, we don't do things flippantly unless again we've prayed over it because we believe prayer comes first and um, we knew that for you know yeah for her we knew that was going to be a struggle um, we just knew as a whole it would be better for the groups that way, uh, to grow the groups that way. Um, but she was, she at first, yeah, she couldn't because of her job. She could not make Wednesday, but she knew that it was so important for C groups that after a few months she literally switched schedules uh, so that she could come to that. So uh, it has been an incredible time for her. And it's been a blessing both ways. Not only has she been blessed, but because of her, she's also been a blessing to others. And that's the thing, not only are you gonna be blessed, but you never know the blessing that you are to someone else's life. It goes both ways, it really does. Again, thank you, Esmeralda, I thought that was awesome. All right, so when and where do our C groups meet this year? If you wanna look at on your, on your pews or as well, uh, is a flyer that you can take with you. Um, and it gives all the details about what our C groups are this year. Um, they, uh, the, this is our 12th season and it starts this Wednesday, um, October 2nd. Uh, small groups will typically meet every single Wednesday. And even if you miss a week, no worries, because our C groups are built that you don't miss anything. So even if you miss one or if you miss two or miss three because of life, hop on that week four because you can hop on any time and you won't miss a thing. Uh, these groups are designed to reach people uh, any time of the year. Uh, C groups will also be taking, as we always do, a break during the summer, because you know how busy our summers are, how short our summer is here in Wisconsin, and it gives us a good time uh, to then relaunch in the fall. Um, I think when you stop things, that is a good thing, because then when you restart them, it's just that excitement then uh, builds when you restart. Uh, these are small groups, and they'll meet in, uh, throughout Fond du Lac, and as we grow, um, I might actually ask you to pray about leading a group yourself um, when we need it. Um, so anyway, let me just show you the groups right here. Um, if you want to look on the one side where it has the group names. Um, so small group number one, uh, you can put up that Lex, uh, next slide there, son. Um, we're... Um, uh, no, that, this would be, um, actually, I don't know what number this would be. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the first one is Carrie and Ken Henschel. Give it up for them. Woo! Now, you weren't in here because you were counting the offering. Have you guys, did you guys start with us 12 years ago as leaders? All right. So, yeah, they've been leading since day, literally since day one. Matter of fact, I remember when we first started, uh, Ken's hair was black and it went down to here. I mean, it was awesome, man. He was a hippie, man. He was loving Jesus. And now it's short and curly and white. Um, but he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. The thing about Carrie is when we started, she was 39 and she's still. I don't know how it happens, but that's incredible. Um, but anyway, Carrie and Ken's group meets at their house, which is awesome. Um, matter of fact, they remodeled their house just for C groups. No, I'm kidding. But but it, it has been remodeled and it looks really nice in there. Um, they, they live just right outside of town. Um, very easy to get to. Uh, their information is there. Um, if you want to contact Carrie uh, or Ken, they're their numbers, or you can contact Carrie through Facebook as well. Um, they meet Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. 
Then our, our small group two, and they're not here today, uh, but that would be Max and Renee Engel that I know some of you are part of. Uh, they meet actually right here at the church, actually uh, down the hallway here in the adult Sunday school room. Uh, their numbers are there if you want to reach them. Uh, like if you get lost of where the church is, you can call them. Um, and then you can contact Renee Engel through Facebook. Uh, as well. Their time, maybe you'd like to meet a little earlier, their time meets at 6 instead of 6.30. Um, and then our third group, um, which is great, is uh, if you speak Spanish and you feel more comfortable to be part of Spanish speaking group, uh, we have Pastor Angel Macbeth that lead that group right here in the fellowship hall. Uh, there are their numbers. Or if you know Hispanics in your neighborhood or at work or wherever, encourage them, invite them to one of these groups or invite them to this group. And their numbers are there and they meet every Wednesday night uh, at 6.30. Uh, again, at the bottom, there's a new topic every week. And then on the flip side is, oh, first of all, the one thing, uh, here's some good news. Um, we might be adding, um, we're praying about adding a fourth small group. And I am so incredibly excited about this. Uh, we are getting at a place where we feel, again, we're going to try to relaunch a, a young adult, uh, a young adult group uh, from 18 to 30. That is a, uh, and because, um, Angel, or not Angel, but Jordan and JR, I've talked to them and they really have a heart for the young adults and young, young people. And so we're praying about uh, starting that group. Uh, but we will we'll let you know when that launches. Again, that'll be for people 18 to 30, um, whether you're single or married. Uh, but it's a group for them. It's going to be awesome. That is, a, that, is a, that is a gap that a lot of churches just miss. And it's a gap that a lot of that generation is just not there. We want to try to reach that generation. We feel like we have now a good group in our church. So we're going to, we're really, that's awesome. Pray for that, please. Pray for that. Pray for our youth ministry. Pray for our young adults, young families, young couples. There is a generation that's missing that we need to reach for Jesus Christ. And so we're looking at starting that ministry back up. And so we'll let you know of the date and times when that group meets as well. Now, on the flip side is, um, uh, is the calendar. Now, it is subject to change. You know winters in Wisconsin. And that's typically when we have to cancel one because of something happening. So, um, or if uh, last year we had a funeral, uh, Brother Norm uh, Brooks, uh, we had his funeral. They, we had his funeral on a Wednesday, so we, we couldn't meet on that Wednesday. And so, uh, if life happens, we're just going to be flexible. So, as you can see there, the Wednesday, October 2nd. Um, uh, starts our first C group uh, there and you, you see the, the ones in red uh, are usually something going on like November we have Thanksgiving, December 4th um, we're going to be setting up for Christmas right away after Thanksgiving. We have two weeks off uh, for Christmas break. Then on uh, Wednesday, February 12th, we do have C groups, but we combine all three of our C groups uh, in the fellowship hall because that is also missions convention. So we bring in a missionary to speak to our small groups. It's a great time, very well attended. We have many people in our fellowship hall uh, that come together in a big C group uh, where we get to hear a missionary speak into our lives. It really is awesome. Uh, then in March, uh, we'll break it up a little bit by doing a night of celebration where all the small groups come together for praise and worship and loving our Lord. Um, and then uh, Easter is late this year. And uh, so it will be, uh, so then really uh, almost uh, at the second half of April uh, is when Easter is. We'll be filling eggs on, one, on that Wednesday there. And then the last group will meet Wednesday, May 21st. Now, if you're, pre if you're, if you have a if you know what's going on, you're like, wow! I thought we usually end the first, the last Wednesday of May. Um, I thought we usually met. I thought we usually ended at the last. Well, uh, what we're going to do there? So we're ending like a week earlier uh, because in the board we've we as a board have already approved this. Uh, but the last Wednesday of May, and you can already make note of this because it's already on the calendar, Wednesday, May 28th will be our annual business meeting. No longer on a Saturday anymore. 
No longer on a Saturday. We thought, let's just use it. Let's already take advantage of a Wednesday night where most of us are going to be in a seat group anyway. And we don't have to worry about the weekend. So we're going to do our annual business meeting on Wednesday, May 28th. And so, um, so that's why we thought we'll just meet, we'll end early. And since we're already in that rhythm anyway, it will make a very easy transition uh, here. We think that will be awesome there. All right. Um, Let's see, uh, now I kind of lost, okay, great. Now, here's the big thing, and I'm really excited about this. What are we dealing with this year? Now, before you show that video, I just want to tell you this, that this, that I am so excited. This might be the most powerful C group uh, study that we've ever done before, because I don't know if you know what's going on, but Israel is in the center of the world right now. Matter of fact, the, the praise God thing is that Israel just killed the number one guy in charge of Hezbollah. That's awesome. Israel is God's country. It's God's people. What happens in Israel shakes the world. And when you see things shaken in Israel, you better be prayed up because birth pains are happening. And so Max Licato has come up with an incredible study that I think you really are going to enjoy. If you want to show that video, son, that'd be great. I think that is so timely. I saw Max Licato. How many of you appreciate Max Licato? He is incredible. Uh, we have done his secret material before, and the reason why I love, why I, why um, I really appreciate him is because he says things in a very peaceful, joyful way. I love the stories, illustrations that he uses. I mean, he, to me, I, I mean, he would make a great father. I mean, he just says things in a way that really appeal uh, to a discipleship heart. And so I know you will be blessed. Matter of fact, um, uh, do you view the events of the end times of age through the eyes of fear or through the eyes of faith? In this Bible study, Max Licato provides a wise and reassuring overview of what God's word has to say on the topic of the end times so that you can be prepared, not scared. Why think about the end times at all? Well, watch the news. Why occupy your thoughts of the not yet when we have to deal with what Max said as the right now? The answer is simple. Because Jesus did focus on the end times. So if Jesus made the end times a priority, we need to as well. And again, I really feel these growing pains are more closer now than ever before. God has told us what to expect from the end times, not to scare us, but to prepare us. He is like a pilot on the intercom telling the passengers about the impeding turbulence. A good pilot will always keep the travelers informed, even if it might be rocky ground. And your good father will do the same. If there ever was a time that you needed to be part of a small group, it is now. Jordan, if you could come forward. This world battles for the truth and to discover what is right in front and what sometimes can be false. There are so many voices telling us what is correct, but what is real? How will I know to determine what is right and wrong? I truly believe connecting through a small group, it will help each of you to build the maturity, growth, courage, and strength that God intends for all of us to have. My hope and prayer is that each of you would get involved in a life group, in a C group today. And as you leave today, please pray and look over that C group insert that you have. Again, there's no sign up. You just try it and start a journey with others that are going through something just like you. Amen. If we could all stand, Elliot and, and Helen, if you could come forward. Carrie, are you able to, to come forward uh, this morning as well? We have elders that are here today. And here's the thing, is that we're going to end. I know that you know a message like this just doesn't really have that conviction of, of, oh my goodness, I really need to come up front and, and do this. But, but here's the thing. I know that when God's people come together, we need to come together in prayer as well. And there are, there are things that we are going through in life. There are people in this room that need a touch of the Lord. And there are people in this room that just want to spend some time with the Lord. And, and so we really feel, again, in James 5, 14 and 15, it says, Is anyone among you sick? 
Let them call on the elders that we have here at church to pray over them and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith, trust, being fully persuaded, will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. If you're going through any pain, struggle, believe in a God that will heal you. Matter of fact, Exodus says that he is the God that will heal you. And that if you have the confidence in 1 John, if you have the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he'll hear you. And if we know that he hears us, then whatever we ask for, we can have what we've asked of him. And matter of fact, Isaiah and then Peter have also echoed that by the stripes of the Lord, you are healed. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And maybe you need to go to an elder for a prayer of healing over in faith. Maybe some of you just want to come to the altar and you need to cry out some things to God that you've been battling in prayer this week. The, we, uh, we believe that this altar is on fire, not only to consume our sin, but also to consume you and to give you a new life and power from the Holy Spirit. Some of you in this room maybe need to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you can come up front as well for prayer of that or for healing. God will meet you at where you need him to be. God is here in an incredible, strong way. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray a prayer of dismissal. And after that prayer, if you need to go, have a wonderful day. Have a, a, an awesome time. But after that prayer as well, the, uh, the altars are open for prayer. Our elders are here. And we want to create this room to be a place of prayer. And so let us honor that. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this, for this afternoon. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to hearts, you would touch hearts. And I pray in the power of Jesus that signs and wonders and miracles will take place this morning when we pray, Lord, by faith, knowing that you will change us, renew us, strengthen us, and heal us in your most honored and powerful name. Amen and amen. Let's spend time in prayer. Have a great day. We love you.